The first thing that you will probably notice about the sea scallop is that it has a very distinctive orange color. This orange color can sometimes be enough to identify the scallop, like in this image. However, sometimes due to a combination of depth and abundance of light, certain colors can be washed out, leaving an image that looks like it was only colored using blues and greens. We found that the images taken at night usually retain the orange color of the scallops, while the daytime images do not. However, this is not always the case, so make sure to keep a watchful eye. Lighting isn't the only cause for the scallops appearing the wrong color. Occasionally, the scallop can be covered within a thin layer of seafloor sediment, so its colorings will match the seafloor. Next, let's focus on the shape of the scallop. Similar to a clam that you would have seen in a supermarket, the scallop shell is made up of two halves called valves. This is where the term bivalve comes from. Notice that the scallop shell is not perfectly circular. The non-circular part of the shell occurs at the hinge, where the two valves are joined together. The triangular-shaped protrusions at both ends of the hinge are called ears or auricles. The positioning of the scallop in an image may not show auricles near the shell hinge, but the presence of them lets you know that you are definitely looking at a sea scallop. The other thing to know about scallops is that they are filter feeders, and in order to obtain food, they will typically partially open their shells. When photographed from certain angles, a partially open scallop shell can be easily identifiable. Note the lighter colored crescent shape on the edge of the scallop. The lighter color is the partially exposed mantle of the scallop. We began to lovingly refer to scallops that shared this look and coloring as pancakes. If you see something that vaguely reminds you of a pancake in these images, it is most likely a scallop. Many marine organisms depend on each other to survive. One such organism that depends on the scallop is a type of polychaete. Polychaetes are just a class of worm. Here you can see numerous squiggly string-like objects on the shells of these scallops. Each one of these is a polychaete that has attached itself to the scallop shell. The presence of these is a good indication that you are looking at a scallop. One last identifying feature of the sea scallop is that sometimes the scallop will form a slight depression in the seafloor in which it will lay. These depressions are typically circular in shape and you will find the scallop sitting in the center of it. The lack of a depression does not necessarily mean that you're looking at isn't a scalp, as not all scalps will have made one, but the presence of a depression is strong evidence that you're looking at a scalp. Next, let's discuss things on the seafloor that you might confuse for a scalp, but that are not. First, for this study we are only interested in counting live scalps. It is not always easy to tell if a scalp is alive or not, but there are a few instances where you can be sure it's not, and in which case you would not count it. To be considered alive, the scallop shell must be articulated. The term articulated refers to when the two halves of a scallop shell are connected together by a hinge. After a scallop dies, it is common for the hinge to break apart, separating the two halves of the scallop shell. When this occurs, you may see a shell that looks like a scallop, but you'll typically notice that it is completely white. This is often because you are either looking at the inside surface of a singular valve, note how in this case the scallop shell looks like a bowl, or that the scallop has been dead long enough for the shell to completely lose its coloring. There are a couple of marine organisms that you may encounter that you might be tempted to confuse with a scallop. The first is the sand dollar. It is easy to see how a sand dollar could be confused with a scallop, but it appears more brown than the scallop. These images show two beds of sand dollars. Only very young scallop called recruits are ever this small. Also note that these sand dollars are perfectly circular, a feature which the scallop does not share. The sand dollar will also not make a personal depression in the seafloor like some scallops will. Lastly, it is not uncommon for sand dollars to occur in vast numbers, so if you think at first glance that an image has a large number of small scallops in it, make sure to take a very close look to be sure that they are not sand dollars. The other organism with a similar appearance of the scallop that you will encounter is the Atlantic Surf Clam. At first glance, one might be tempted to identify it as a sea scallop. But upon further investigation, you'll notice that the surf clam shell lacks the triangular protrusions of the sea scalp. Also note the shell as a whole has a very triangular shape, with the shell forming a point at the hinge. That about sums up the identification guide. So with that, let's quickly review what we've learned. Sea scallops are orange in color, but may not always show this coloring in the image. Scallops are almost circular in shape, except at the hinge where there are two triangular protrusions. Scallops may have an appearance similar to a pancake when they personally open their shell. The presence of polychaetes on the shell can be a helpful identifying feature. 
A scallop shell that is completely white or not articulated is not alive and should not be counted. Do not confuse a sand owl or a surf clam for a sea scallop. As you begin your scalloping adventure, don't be afraid to take your time or to consult the help material on this website. With time and experience, you will soon be able to quickly identify sea scallops. We thank you again for your participation and contribution to this project. Good luck and happy scalloping!